Good morning, and welcome to another great day at Fairfield Middle School, where we're achieving excellence together and we're the home of Griffin Pride. What Pride stands for? P is personal responsibility. R, respect. I, individual readiness. D, demonstrated learning. And E, effective behaviors. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please pause for a moment of silence. Thank you, you may be seated. The career class that we know for theory is manufacturing. The areas in the manufacturing cluster are about turning a lot of materials into the final consumer products. People of these occupations can work with big machines, precision, tools, and computers to assemble parts of built products. They may work in large buildings, outdoor warehouses. You can be many types of engineer, machine operator, electrician, or quality control technician, a BMD area cluster. Manufacturing interests, civil, weaving, reading, or other projects. Building things such as reading projects, taking machine shop classes, repairing machinery, working with leather goods, operating a printing press, the rules of manufacturing include machine operating, Welder, cabinet maker, textile inspector, health and safety specialized. The College Highlight for February is South Carolina State University. Since 1896, South Carolina State University has maintained a legacy of excellence and education. The college has been home to generations of scholars and leaders in business, military service, government, athletics, education, medicine, science, engineering, technology, and more. Located in Orangeburg, South Carolina, SC State was founded as a land-grant college with the mission of providing education and service to the citizens of the state. In its first century, SC State was a leader in education and continues to lead the way into the next century. The character trait for the month is kindness. Kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. For example, giving compliments, giving gifts, saying kind words, showing gratitude, and doing an act of service for someone else. Celebrate Black History Month 2024. Black History Month started with an idea from historian Carter G. Woodson and others because there was a lack of exposure of the accomplishments made by African Americans. What started as a week in 1926 grew to become a month-long celebration of African American achievements in 1976. Black History Month is an opportunity to honor and reflect the contributions of African Americans throughout history. Since 1926, the United States, as well as other countries like Canada, the United Kingdom, Germany, and the Netherlands have celebrated Black people and their contribution to history and culture. Activities such as parades, museum exhibits, and educational programs have taken place throughout the world to recognize these accomplishments. During this time, we recognize activists and civil rights leaders as investors, scientists, artists, athletes, and many others for their contribution here around the world. This year's theme is African Americans and the Arts. For the week of February 1st through February 9th, on February 1st, 1865, the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which abolished slavery, was adopted by the 38th Congress. In 1902, Langston Hughes, a famous poet, was born as Dan Joplin, Missouri. In 1926, 
What is known as Black History Month was first celebrated on this day as Negro History Week by Cardi G. Woodson. It became a month-long celebration in 1976. On February 2nd, in 1862, District of Columbia abolished slavery. In 1914, Ernest Just, genetic biologist, won the Spangard Medal. He received the same medal on this day in 1915 for his pioneering and cell division of fertilization. In 1948, President Terman sent Congress a special message urging the adoption of civil rights program, including the creation of a Fair Employment Practices Commission. On February 3rd, in 1903, Jack Dropson was the Negro heavyweight title. He became the first African-American World Heavyweight Boxing Championship. In 1920, the Negro Baseball League is founded. In 1920, an organized league structure was formed under the guidance of Andrew Rube Foster, a former player, manager, and owner for the Chicago American Giants. In a meeting held at the Paseo YMCA in Kansas City, Montana, Foster and a few other Midwestern team owners joined the form of the Negro National League. Soon rivals leagues formed in eastern and southern states, bringing the thrills and innovative play of black baseball to major urban centers in rural countryside, the U.S., Canada, and Latin America. The leagues maintained a high level of professional skill and became the centerpiece for economic development in many black communities. February 4th, 1913, Rosa Parks, born Rosa Louise McCauley, was born on this day. 1996, J.C. Watts became the first black selected in response to a State of the Union address. In 1990, Watts became the first African American selected to statewide office in Oklahoma when he won a seat on the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, the state's regulatory body for public utilities. He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in Oklahoma's larger rural and white fourth Congressional District in 1994. In 1997, he was the first African American to deliver a party's response to the President's State of Union address. He was selected chairman of the House of Republican Conference the following year. On February 5th, in 1866, Congressman Thaddeus Stevens offered an amendment to Freeman's Bureau Bill, authorizing the distribution of public land and confiscated land to freedmen and loyal refugees in 40 acre plots. In 1958, Clifton R. Wharton, S.R., confirmed as minister to Romania. This career diplomat was the first black to head a U.S. embassy in Europe. In 1962, a lawsuit seeking to bar Englewood, New Jersey, from maintaining racial segregated elementary schools filed in the U.S. District Court. On February 6th, 1820, Mayflower of Liberia sailed from the New York City with 86 blacks. The Mayflower of Liberia sailed from New York City abroad the ship, the Elizabeth, which was called the Mayflower of Liberia. They were bound for the British colony of Sierra Leone. In, 19, in 1867, Robert Tanner Freeman was the first African American to receive a degree in dentistry from an academic institution. Freeman was born around 1846 in Washington, D.C. He trained under Dr. Henry Bliss Noble, who encouraged him to formally train for a dental career. Freeman applied to two schools and was, re was rejected on racial grounds, but he applied to Harvard Dental School after its founding, and in March of 1869, he was one of the only six to receive the Doctor of Dental Medicine degree. In 1993, Arthur Ashe died. Arthur Ashe was the first African American to win the men's singles title at Wibbleman and the U.S. Open, and the first African American man to be ranked number one in the world, and the first to earn induction to the Tennis Hall of Fame. Tennis was forever changed the moment Arthur Robert Ashe Jr. won the U.S. Open in 1968. By ending a 12-year drought for U.S. men in the nation's premier tennis tournament, Ashe, more significantly, became the first black man to wear a Grand Slam event, proving to the world that tennis was indeed open. Arthur Ashe Stadium is a tennis arena at Flushing Meadows, Corona Park in Queens, New York City. The stadium is named, named after Arthur Ashe. Well, in 1926. Negro History Week originated by Carter G. Wilson is reserved for the first time. Carter G. Wilson initiated the first celebration of Negro History Week, which led to the Black History Month to instill and deepen the study and scholarship for African American history all year long. It is commonly said that Wilson selected February to accompany the birthdays of two great Americans who played a prominent role and shape of black history, namely Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, whose birthdays are the 12th and the 14th, respectively. 
More importantly, he chooses jump for reasons of tradition. Since Lincoln's assassination in 1865, the, the black community, along with other Republicans, had been celebrating the following president's birthday. And since the late 1890s, black communities across the country had been celebrating Debbie's birthday. We are aware of pre existing celebrations. What's in the Negro history of uh, traditional days of commemorating the black parents? On February 8th, in 1944, Harry S. McAlphin became the first African American to be accredited to, the, to attend the White House press conference. In 1986, Ofra Winfrey became the first African American woman to host a national syndicated talk show. Syndicated nationally in 1986, the program became the highest rated television talk show in the United States and earned several Emmy Awards. The final episode of Ofra Winfrey show aired on Wednesday, May 25th, 2011. On February 9th, in 1944, novelist Alice Walker was born in Etonton, Georgia. In 1952, author Ralph Ellison's novel Invisible Man won the National Book Award. In 1971, Leroy Satchel Page was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. With African-American players barred from the major leagues, Page began his professional career in 1926 in the Negro Southern League. On July 7, 1948, his 42nd birthday, Page became the oldest player to debut in the major leagues, as well as the first Negro League pitcher in the American League. In 1995, Bernard Harris, African-American astronaut, took a spacewalk. As payload commander on Space Shuttle Discovery STS-63 in 1995, he served on the first flight joint of the Russian-American space program, becoming the first African-American to walk in space. As we recognize National School Counseling Week for the week of February 5th through the 9th, do not forget to take the time to thank our guidance counselor, Ms. Gamble, for all the things she does to help each of us be successful. Good morning. My name is Billie Jean, and today is the first day of National School Counseling Week. The theme of this year's week is school counselors, standards-based, student-focused. Did you know that Ms. Gamble has standards for school counseling, just like our teachers have standards for learning? A standard is basically a way to measure excellence or quality. So, at the start of each school year, school counselors use their standards to develop a plan to support our success in school. School counselors use standards to help build a strong foundation to learn. Students, please be aware that third quarter interims will go out on Thursday, February 8th. Thank you for watching the Daily News Show. Let's have a fantastic, avid day.